Hello and welcome to One More Row, the channel where we talk about knitting and expand our skills one row at a time. My name is Dana and I'm glad that you're here to join me today. In today's video, we're going to be making this dishcloth. It is video number three of my Learn to Knit series. And in this video, we're going to, to learn all about increases and decreases. The decreases that we'll be using will be uh, what's known as knit two together, which is, you, it's what it says, you knit two stitches together. And we're also going to be doing increases and those will be done by using a yarn over. Now the yarn over increase, what it does is it makes a lovely eyelet pattern. And you can see that on the edge of this dishcloth here. So if you'd like to know how to make this dishcloth, how to do increases and decreases using, using yarn over and knit two together, then please keep watching. Okay, so for this project, you are going to need a 100% cotton yarn in a worsted weight. Worsted weight yarn is usually designated as number four on the back of some yarn labels. I'm going to see if I can sort of get that in focus. I'm not sure if it will or not, but you can see that there. Number four, and it's 100% cotton. And usually on the back of uh, a yarn label, it will tell you the recommended sizes for knitting needles. In this case, it's a number seven to number eight. Those are in U.S. sizes because this is from a U.S. yarn company. And um, it doesn't show the metric most of the time. You will see uh, the sizes expressed in millimeters. And sometimes you'll see it expressed in U.S. sizes. It really depends on where the yarn comes from. But a U.S. nine, sorry, a U.S. size seven is the size the needle we'll be using today. And in metric, that is a 4.5 millimeter. I'm using circular needles for this project because most of the time, those are the, that's the type of needles that I use. I find they're more versatile than straight needles. And I particularly like interchangeable ones, which means I can take the tips off. I can't right now because it's too tight. But with interchangeable needles, you get several different size cords and you get different size needle tips so that you can exchange your needles from one size to another quite easily. We're also going to need, of course, a pair of scissors for cutting our yarn. And we'll, we'll need what's known as a yarn needle. Now, a yarn needle usually has a blunt tip and a a large eye and that's so that you can get your yarn through the eye quite easily like that okay so once you have your tools assembled and your yarn assembled you can get started I will leave links below for suggested yarns in case you are unable to get out to purchase yarn um, this kind of yarn, you can order it online from Knit Picks. You can also buy other types of 100% cotton yarn. There's lots of different brands. And it's actually a yarn that's quite easy to find in craft stores or larger retailers that have a, um, a craft se section such as Walmart. But understandably, if you're watching this in 2020, going out to the store may not be an option. So like I said, I will include links below for everything that you need to make this dishcloth. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off by casting on four stitches. So we start like we do with every cast on with a slip knot. So I'm just going to wrap the yarn around my finger, pass the longer end in between my index and middle finger and I'm going to make a loop. Slide that off there. So I've got a little loop here and then I'm going to put my knitting needle in it and just tighten it. Now you don't want it to be too tight. 
you want your needle to slide. With cotton especially, because cotton is a bit grabby, which means it likes, it's not as smooth. Sometimes it sticks a little and you don't want that because you don't want your knitting to be too tight. You don't want it to be too loose, but you don't want it to be too tight. But that's something that a lot of times comes with practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast on four stitches. I'm going to use a long tail cast on, which is my preferred method of casting on. But if you know a different one or if you prefer a different one, then you're certainly f welcome to use that. In the video of lesson two, I showed you how to do a cable cast on. And in the video for lesson one, I showed you how to do a long tail. But I'll just give a quick overview again because it is only four stitches. So our slip stitch counts as one. And then we're going to take our needle. We're going to go under the two stitches that are over our thumb down through the loop and we're going to catch the yarn that's over our index finger, flex our thumb down so that the loop is open and bring the yarn through. Let it go and then put our thumb back in the V that we've created here and tighten it. I still have play with my stitches. I'll still be able to knit them. So just make sure they're not too tight, but you don't want them really loose and floppy either. But that, again, like I said, that's something that'll come with practice. So again, we're gonna go underneath the two strands that are over our thumb, through the loop, catch the index finger yarn, flex our thumb down, and pull our yarn through, tighten it up. And then we just need one more stitch. Grab it, and there we go. Okay, so. As I've said in previous videos, my preferred knitting method is the Irish cottage style. That's a bit of a tongue twister, obviously. <laughs> and um, that means I hold my knitting needle like a pencil and I tension my yarn over my right hand and I wrap my yarn with my right hand. There are other methods of knitting, which I may get into in the future, but currently, um, this is the one that I use the most and that's because over the years I've been I've been I learned to knit when I was around 10 so I've been knitting for about 37 years and what I find is this method enables me to to knit for long periods of times so with breaks of course without experiencing hand cramping which I uh, I do get with uh, continental style knitting and to some extent, extent with the English style of knitting that I it's what I learned when I learned how to knit so anyway on with the knitting so you're going to wrap your yarn if you choose to do uh, your knitting this way wrap your yarn around your middle finger like this have it fall over your ring finger your knitting needle is being held like a pencil and the weight of the needle is resting in the meaty part of your the crook of your thumb so that holds it secure while you make the motion of wrapping your yarn. You don't need to drop the needle or anything like that. So we're going to swing our hand around so that we wrap our yarn around the needle. It's inserted in the stitch from front to back. And then we're just gonna flex the left hand needle off like that. So that's a review of the knit stitch, but I've done two videos so far that feature this stitch. So you should be familiar with it if you've been following along. And we're going to knit to the end. So for your first row, woo, just pulled that off, but you know what, it's quite easy, we'll just pick it up. So you knit your first row. So now we're going to start the row that establishes the pattern for the first half of this dishcloth. So we're going to knit two stitches, one, two. And then we are going to create our yarn over increase. To do that, we act just like we're going to knit, except we do not insert our needle into the next stitch. We just wrap our yarn around so that we have the yarn going over top of the needle. Then you insert your needle into the stitch, wrap the yarn around, and pull it out. And you'll see that I've created an extra stitch. So I now have five in total for this row. And then I'll knit the last stitch. And you're gonna turn your work. This particular dishcloth is done where you knit every row. So it's in garter stitch. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first two stitches, one, two, yarn over, so our yarn's going over our needle, going to knit into the next stitch. Now this is our yarn over stitch from the previous row, and you just knit it like you would any other stitch. You put your needle from front to back through the front leg of the stitch, you wrap your yarn, you pull it through. And now we just knit the last two. Turn the work again, and that establishes the pattern. I'll knit a few more rows just so that we know we've got the hang of it. So your rows will always be knit the first two stitches, yarn over, and then knit to the end and turn your work. And it's that simple. So knit two, one, two, yarn over, knit to the end. Okay, and again, knit two, yarn over, knit to the end. And you can start to see our pretty little eyelets that are showing up that will act as a border. Now this cloth will get wider as we go up, so it will start to take um, the shape of half a diamond, and that's okay. It will be square once we're finished because we'll just turn it. <laughs> So you're going to continue on like that, knitting. First two stitches, yarn over, knit to the end, and you're gonna keep doing that until we have 40 stitches in total on the needle. Once we get to those 40 stitches, I will come back and I will show you how to knit the second half of the dishcloth. So, just keep knitting to yarn over, knit to the end, and I will be back. Okay, so I'm back and we now have 40 stitches on our needle. If you want a bigger cloth, you can certainly continue on to your desired width, but 40 is enough for me. I don't like super big dishcloths, so this is a good size for me. But like I said, if you want to make yours bigger, you are certainly free to do so. So now for the second half of this cloth what we need to do is we need to bring it instead of going from a point this way we're going to take it from here at our widest and go back to our narrowest which will be a four stitch width. So in order to do that we have to do our decreasing. So the pattern is going to change a little bit. So what you need to do is you need to knit your first stitch, but instead of knitting the second one, you're going to knit it and the stitch next to it together. Okay, like that. So you've actually now decreased one stitch. In order to keep this nice eyelet running along the edge though, we have to do another yarn over. But what this yarn over does is it makes our stitch count go back to 40, which is not what we want. We want our stitch count at 39 by the time we get to the end of the row. So to accomplish getting it to 39, we simply need to do another knit two together after we do our yarn over. So we're going to insert our needle from front to back through the front legs of both stitches. Wrap our yarn around and knit it just like we would if it was a single stitch. And then you just knit across all the way to the end. And I'll just do this quickly. Okay, so now we turn the work and we repeat the same row that we did with the previous one. So knit your first stitch, knit two together, yarn over, 
knit two together, and knit to the end. And you're going to continue to do this uh, until until we get to about seven stitches. Uh, I'll I'll keep going, but it will be off camera. I'm not going to make you watch me knit back and forth. I don't want to upload a half hour video of just me knitting back and forth here. So um, I'll do the 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 row, the next row, and then and then I'll turn off the camera and continue on. And then when I get back, I'll be at seven stitches, and then I'll show you how to finish things off because there'll be a couple rows that we'll do to get to our four stitches and then we'll do the bind off. So just let me get to this point here. Okay, so quick review of what you're going to be doing for the next several rows. So you're going to knit one. Make sure that's tight. Knit two together. your yarn over, knit two together again, and then knit to the end. So I'm going to continue on until I get to seven stitches and I will be back. Okay, so we are at seven stitches. We're almost finished. We're going to do another row like all the previous rows. So I'm just going to knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together and then knit to the end and that's going to leave me with six stitches this row is going to be a little bit different okay I'm go not going to do a yarn over on this one I'm just going to knit one knit two together knit two together again and then knit one so that leaves me with four and then for the bind off, I'm not going to do the bind off that I did in the previous two videos. I'm going to do a knit two together bind off. So what that means is I'm going to knit two together. Okay, instead of continuing on and knitting these two, I'm going to slip my the stitch I just made back on the left hand needle and then knit it with the next stitch in line. I'm going to slip that stitch back on the needle knit it with the next two and then I'm just going to wrap that around and I'm going to cut it with my scissors and pull it through and then just pull it tight. Okay so now all that's left to do is we're going to weave in our ends. So to do that And it looks a little bit wider up here. That's just because, and a little bit longer. It will straighten out, but because it got heavier as we were knitting it, it sort of stretched this way, but it'll be fine. It'll spring back to normal once you use it. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm going to bring this down t more towards the body of the, the dishcloth and I want to avoid my yarn overs because I don't want to block them and I don't want to sew through them because they do look quite pretty. So I'm going to bring my needle diagonally across here and then just pull that through and then I'm going to come up diagonally through there. And then I'm going to go down, I'm going to go over, see that little bump there? I'm going to go over it, my, my yarn's going to mirror that bump. And then I'm going to go down through the, the stitch, the loop that's beside it, and then through the one diagonally beneath it. And I'm probably going to go over this way because I am getting a little bit close to the edge. So I'm just going to go through two more here, right? And then I'm going to go um, I'm going to go this way. So I'm going to bring my needle up through these two. 
you don't want to pull too tight when you're weaving in your ends because you don't want your cloth to pucker. And then I'm just going to bring it down through these two and then just cut off the yarn so that it's really close to the edge like that. So because it's gone and it's wound its way around, that, uh, that yarn's not going anywhere. And I'm going to do the same with this side. Okay, so we're just going to come down through to the body of the cloth here and pull through. Like that. Just make that a little shorter. Okay, so then I'm going to go up these two, up this one, up that one, and I am getting close to my yarn over, so I'm just going to go through that loop and then come down here. And then I'm going to go over this way uh, a couple of rows down. So I'm just going to bring that through that loop and that loop. Oop. And then we're going to go up these two like that. Down these two, being careful not to pull too tight. You don't want it loose and floppy, but again, you don't want it so tight that it's going to pucker your work. And then we're just going to go up one more time, like that. And then I'm just going to cut off that yarn. And it's not going to escape. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, like that. And we're done. So that's it. That's our third dishcloth in this series. Um, I think we'll probably do maybe one more. Because I would like to um, show how to read a knitting pattern because I, I feel that's an important skill as well so <clears throat> thank you for watching if you're new to my channel please subscribe if you would like to ask a question or if you would if there's anything that you would like to see in upcoming videos please feel free to comment and make sure you hit the bell so that you can be notified when I put up my next video and until then happy knitting and I'll see you later